Barakatay Yahuwah, Barakatay Yahuwah Shai, Kol Halon Imla, Yahuwah, Bahasham, Yahuwah Shai, Barakha HaKwadash, which means all praises to Yahuwah is the name of the Heavenly Father, Bahasham means in the name. Yahuwah Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Barakha HaKwadash means in the Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth, the only way you can worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace, blessed salutations to all your brothers who preach the gospel and truth and in sincerity, always in charity. And, um, it's another uh, 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 a week of camp, you know, Lord willing, um, the spirit allows, you know, I, I can do this every week before camp, you know, uh, pre-camp warm up, you know, just uh, uh, get myself in the spirit and to get brothers out in, in the spirit, whoever going out today, you know. Um, <clears throat> so without further ado, I'm going to just hop right into it. This is Second uh, Maccabees 15 and 7. It says, but Maccabees had ever sure confidence that the Lord would help him. It's the same thing that we must do. Have confidence that Yahweh Basham Yahusha is out there with us on the highways and hedges. This is uh, Psalms 34 and 7. It says, The angel of Yahweh encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. You see? So each one of us got a, a, a guardian angel there protecting us, man, that's there with us, you know? So we ain't got to fear to, uh, 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 like it says in Jeremiah, man. Let me grab that real fast, you know? Because we're out there speaking with the words of Yahweh Basham Yahusha. So we have nothing to fear. This is Jeremiah. Um, I know he said, be not a, uh, be not dismayed at their faces. Roughly paraphrasing that scripture, you know? Basically, be not a hey, shalom on to you too, brother. I was thinking Ezekiel the third chapter. I was thinking that. But I thought it was Jeremiah. Salaki, bear with me one second. This is um this is the book. Yeah, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter one, and um, verse 17. And it says, it says, Thou therefore gird up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. So that's what we're commanded to do. You see, go out there and do what, man? You know, stand in great boldness against the face of such as afflicted us. This is wisdom of Solomon. The fifth chapter in the first verse, it says, Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labels, man. You know, so that's what we ought to do. Go out there and do what, man? As our forefather Noah did. Matter of fact, this is Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 7. It says, by faith, Noah been warned of the most high of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. You see? So he became a, 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 a heir of righteousness through what? Because he went out there and condemned the world. He moved with fear. You see? He was warned of the things uh, that's not yet to come. Same thing uh, is taking place with us in, 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 in the modern age that we're living. This is Second Edris, chapter 15, and verse 1. It says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which that's what we go out and do. You see, it says, Which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. So our job is to do what? Go out there and condemn this present evil world. You see? Because it's not our words, you know, this is not a, 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 of our own will. This is of the Father which speaketh in us. This is Matthew, the 10th chapter and the 20th verse. And it reads, For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. Which goes back to Ezekiel, the third chapter that the brother just put on the comment board. This is Ezekiel 3. And verse I started one. It says, "Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this roll and go speak unto the house of Israel. The roll is what the scriptures. It says, so I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man. So 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 this ain't just a Saturday thing. You see, 
LeBron just the, when the game starts, LeBron hey, all week he's sitting on his ass bullshitting, eating cocoa puffs and shit. Got that from a pasta heart. He had on them honeycombs. But um, sitting on your ass, just sitting around, you know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, when game time come, all of a sudden he turned into LeBron and hop out. No, no, it don't work like that, man. All throughout the week, we must be doing what? Meditating upon these precepts, man. Studying, reading, you know, looking up words. You see, making these videos exhortation because the scripture says what? He that water, water also himself as well, man. So this is a thing of what? Constant endurance. You constantly being involved within this, you know? This is um verse three. And he said unto me, son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel and speak with my words unto them. You see? So that's what we're commanded to do. Like it says, this is Isaiah the 58 chapter. In verse one, it says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions in the house of Jacob their sins. So like it says, what? In uh, that second address, you know, if you continue to read nine, it says, what? Fear not the incredulity of them that speak against thee, you know, because the Lord will no longer hold his uh, 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 peace as touching their wickedness. So through the spirit of power, Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh, he has risen up his prophets to go out there and do what? To condemn this present evil world and to do what? To say, uh, 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 repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We're being gathered by the word, like it's in Baruch, the fourth chapter, the 37th verse. And we ought to do it with what? In all confidence and assurance of, uh, of, of the Lord is there to help us. This is 2 Maccabees 15 and 7 again. But Maccabees had ever sure confidence that the Lord would help him. Wherefore, he exhorted his people not to fear the coming of the heathen against them, right? Don't fear all these niggas that's against us, man. Like I said, matter of fact, I'm going to jump back to this uh, the second Ezra. It's back in second Ezra. Chapter 15, verse 3. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. You see? So don't fear to come another heathen, man. You know? Because, a matter of fact, matter of fact, I got one too. Got another one. This is uh, 1 Maccabees 2. <clears throat> and guess what? Two thirds of our people are accounted as heathen on this side. You know? That's why the scripture says, peace be on uh, unto you in the Israel of God. Yashar Allah Shal, Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai, man. That's who we're focused on, man. He that have an ear to hear, let him hear. We ain't out there for uh, uh, all Israel. You know, all these guys want to come out. Uh, we, we're gathering all Israel. We're the baby. Said, you a goddamn fool, man. We're gathering the elect of Yashar Allah, as it is written, Romans 11 and 7. Israel have not obtained that which you seek it for, but the election have obtained it and the rest were blinded. So our job is to go out there and do what? To gather the elect, you see? And all we have to do is speak with what? The words that we were taught. Go out and prophesy. That's all we're commanded to do, you know? This is uh, 1 Maccabees 2 and um, verse 62. Fear not then the words of a sinful man, for his glory shall be dung and worms. Today he shall be lifted up, and tomorrow he shall not be found, because he is returning to his dust, and his thought is come to nothing. So those that don't believe in this word, those that don't believe in what we're saying, man, they're they going to die in their sins. You see, they talking shit today, but tomorrow they ass going to be poofed. You understand? So back in 2 Maccabees 15 and 8, wherefore he exhorted his people not to fear the coming of the heathen against them, but to remember the help which in former times they had received from heaven, and now to expect the victory and aid which should come unto them, from the Almighty, because the Lord said, "What He give us a mouth that no man could gainsay nor resist, man." But we gotta trust and put full assurance in Him, right? It says, "And so comforting them out of the law and the prophets, right?" Because this is our comforter. You see, it says, "So comforting them out of the law and the prophets, and with all putting them in mind of the battles that they won afore, He made them more cheerful." So we, we we go back and through whatever little time that I've been through it, you know, and, and the brothers. You know, whatever length of time you've been in the faith, man, remember the different battles that we had out there, man. And the Lord delivered us out of all, all of them. You see? Mighty deal, man. Mighty deal. It says, and so comforting them out of the law and the prophets and with the putting them in mind of the battles that they won afore, he made them more cheerful. And when he had stirred up their minds, right, through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh, Shah, that's, uh, that's what I'm hoping to do, is stirring up brothers minds man to get them ready to go out to war not a physical war no the weapons of our warfare are not carnal 
but they're spiritual to the uh, uh, to the pulling down of strongholds, roughly paraphrasing the scripture. And when he has stirred up their minds, he gave them their charge, showing them their with the falsehood of the heathen and the breach of the oaths. The same thing uh, 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 that, that, that we're doing today, the falsehood of the heathen, man, you know, which is what, man? Esau, Edom and his lies, like it says in Psalms, you know, he put forth his hand uh, against such as I was at peace with him, roughly paraphrasing that scripture. And also two thirds of our people, man, you see, because they are going to go and die to death of the uncircumcised as well. This is Matthew, the 23rd chapter, the 37th verse. I started 30, 35. I started 34. It says, wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, which that's taking place today, man. You know, not physically, but what, man? Uh, 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 spiritually, these people speaking against us, man, they talking shit, you know, right? It says that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Berechias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. And this is Yahweh Shah speaking until that time. You see? So guess what? Now you got to pay for the blood of the apostles. You got to pay for the blood of Yahweh Shai. You know, you got to pay for the, uh, uh, the blood of Elder Abba Bivens. You see? So you got to pay for the, uh, 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 the men of the Lord who died on this side too as well, man. You niggas got to pay for the blood of Captain Lee. You see, it says, verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. This is the time that we're living in, man. You see, so that's why Romans, uh, matter of fact, let me grab that. You know, for us brothers to send a no, now it's not the time to be sitting on our ass bullshitting, man. This is Romans 11, uh, 13 and 11. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to wake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe, man. This is the generation that all this is going to come upon. You see, so now is the time to make sure that you're giving diligence to make your call and election sure. Now is the time to make sure what you serving the Lord and truth and in sincerity, man. You see, this back in um Matthew 23 and 36, it says, Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings and ye would not you see it says but your house is left but your house is left unto you desolate for i say unto you ye shall not see me henceforth till ye shall say blessed is he that cometh in the name of the lord you know so to go back to maccabees this is second maccabees 15 and 9 uh yeah i'll read not again and so comforting them out of the law and the prophets and were with putting them in mind of the battles that they had won or four he made them more cheerful and when he had stirred up their minds, he gave them their charge, showing them their with the falsehood of the heathen in the breach of the oaths. Thus, he armed every one of them, not so much with defense of shields and spears. You see, so Lord willing, man, hey, 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 you brothers are being armed with what? With these comfortable and, and peaceable words, man. Because Judas, hey, even though they had weapons of war, they had shields and spears, right? But it says that he didn't arm them with that. What did he arm them with? Thus he armed every one of them, not so much with defensive shields and spears as with comfortable and good words, man. You see? So this is what's able to stir us up, man. This is what able to, uh, 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 to comfort us, knowing that our power is out there with us when we go out on, on those highways and hedges, man. You know, not to fear the, uh, the coming of these heathen against us, man. All these people that talk shit against us, like the brother said, slandering, posting, posting personal info. Hey, the Lord is going to deal with these niggas, man. But our job is to do what? To go out into the highways and hedges and bid them to the marriage, man. That's what we ought to do. It says, verse 11, thus he armed every one of them not so much with defensive shields and spears as with comfortable and good words. And besides that, he told them a dream worthy to be believed as if it had been so indeed, which did not a little rejoice them. And it's going to go into his dream. But our dream, our vision is what? Receiving that crown from the Lord's right hand, man. Like it says in Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter. Hearing those words, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's the vision. That's the dream that we were looking forward to. You see, each and every one of us are our desires to be uh, uh, to get out of this wretched ass body, man, this body of this death, you know, to serve you how about Shami Yahushai to the best of our ability, man, you know, so we can show him how appreciative we is that he gave us this, 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 this precious gift. He gave us such mercy as this, as it is written. This is a. Uh... Hey. Calm down. This is Second Chronicles, not Chronicles, Second Corinthians 4 
and one, it says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, you see, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of the most high deceitfully, because certain guys do that, man, talking about you can teach whatever you want to teach, you know, that's fucking madness, man, and the Lord is going to deal with these guys. You see, our job is what? To set up as defense of the gospel, man, to go out there and defend our friend, to let people know what his reputation was, who he is, what he's coming to do. You see, he's coming to put these heathens under our foot, man. As it is written, he had many crowns upon his head. Why? Because he's coming to conquer. We're his heralds, man. We're his ambassadors. Therefore, we're going out there saying that our Lord and Savior is on his way. And we must have full assurance and confidence within that because he he's damn sure on his way, man. You know? It says, um, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of the most high deceitfully, but manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of the most high. It says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, man, which that word lost goes into perishing. You see, that's why uh, the book of Peter speaks about those uh, 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 that were appointed to stumble at the word, man. We shouldn't worry about those guys, man. Our job is to go out into the highways and hedges and bid them to the marriage. I'm keep saying that, so let me get that. This is um Matthew. Um the 22nd chapter. I'm gonna start at the first verse. And Yahweh shall answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son, right? And we're hoping to be that bride, man. You know. That's why the scripture says, uh, that's why Paul said that I may present you as a chaste version unto Yahweh Shai. Each one of us should be what? Our brother's keeper. Making sure that we're all spotless, man. You know, making sure that it, 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 we're looking as beautiful. We're looking as on point as we can on, on Yahweh Shai's return. You see, it says, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants saying, tell them which are bidden. Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed and all things already come unto the marriage. And what is that, man? You know, the oxen and the fatlings, you know, the wine is mingled. Here it is. It's, it's this big, wonderful feast that the Lord is making. And these niggas scoffing at it, man. This is Proverbs 9 and 1. Wisdom hath built her house. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. She hath killed her beast. She hath mingled her wine. She hath also furnished her table. She has sent forth her maidens. She cried upon the highest places of the city, you know, and the maidens are who the men out there on the highways and hedges that's prophesying the downfall of this wicked place, you know, who's saying repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You see, this is what our job is, man, you know, but to go back to uh, uh, Matthew 22 and uh, verse five, but they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm and another to his merchandise. And the same thing with our people doing today, they're making light of it, man, you know. Just like guys within these other camps too, man. They're making light of it. You see, you could just all all teach whatever you want to teach as long as we're standing together. And and how how, how the hell are you standing together in unity when you got different doctrines, man? That shit don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. The scripture says we're being gathered by the word, so therefore we're all going to see eye to eye. You know, it says um, and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt up their city. Then saith he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. You see what it means when he when he didn't have on a wedding garment. He wasn't prepared. He wasn't dressed properly. Right. Because why? Because he wasn't taking heed. So matter of fact, this is um the book of uh, Matthew. Salak, yeah, bear with me. This is the book of Matthew chapter 7 and 24. It says, therefore, whosoever heareth these things of mine and doeth them, 
I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Doing the words is what? You preparing yourself, man. You've been covered. You haven't owned that wedding garment. You see? It says, it says, in the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. Meaning what? You're built upon Yahweh Shai because Yahweh Shai is that rock. Meaning what? That you're that you're paired. You're, 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 you're fully dressed, you know? You prepare for the coming of the Lord, man. You nice, you, you you clean, you know what I'm saying? You wearing that all white, you got that wedding garment on, man, which represents what? This knowledge, having the full understanding of this word. That's why Matthew, the 25th chapter goes into what? It goes into the five foolish and the five wise. Those five wise virgins, they had on a proper wedding attire. Those five foolish virgins, guess what? They wasn't, they, 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 they didn't have the right garments on, man. You see, they wasn't prepared properly, you know? And that's what's going to be found with, with, with these guys in these other camps, man. They're not going to have on that wedding garment, meaning what? They're not going to have the right understanding, the proper uh, 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 understanding of these scriptures, man. You know? Back in Matthew uh, 22 and 12. And he saith unto him, friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless, right? He didn't have nothing to say, man. Because here it is. The brothers is telling you, hey, hey, prepare yourself. Brothers are showing you what to wear. Brothers are showing you what to put on. Brothers are showing you how to deck yourself. You see? But yet you scoffed and didn't take heed. You know? It says, then said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen, man. You see? So that's why the scripture says, give diligence to make thy calling and election sure. We must give ourselves wholly into this, man, as it is written in 2nd Ezra, the 8th chapter. We don't want to fall into that. We don't want to be the ones that was called but not chosen, you know? We do, we, we do not want to be that, man. This is 2nd Ezra, chapter 8, and verse 1. And he answered me, saying, The most I have made this world for many, but the world to come for few. We hoping to be that few, man. Because those few are going to do what? This is Second Edris 2 and 44. So I, so I asked the angel and said, sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, these be they that have put off the mortal clothing. You see? So that guy that had on, didn't have on a wedding garment, he still had on mortal clothing, man. He still had that carnal mindset. You see? It says, and uh, uh, these be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal Putting on the immortal is what? Putting on this knowledge, putting on Yahweh Shai, therefore having your wedding garment on, you see? It says, and have confessed the name of the Most High, now are they crowned and received palms. Then said I unto the angel, what young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them palms in their hands? So he answered, and, and those palms represents getting the victory, man. Yahweh Shai, we're getting the victory through Yahweh Shai, you see? And a palm tree uh, it also represents what? The first fruits. So we're hoping to get the victory through Yahweh Shai because that means we are the first fruits, man. It's nothing better than receiving that reward. When you look up the definition of first fruits in the Greek, man, it's a heavy definition, you know? It says, so he answered and said unto me, it is the son of the Most High whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. And it ain't talking about just on Saturday, man, when, or, or Sunday or Friday or Tuesday or whatever perspective day you go out. It ain't talking about just that, man. It's talking about you standing so stiffly in, in your day to day life, period, man. Us standing so stiffly is us uh, 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 conducting ourselves accordingly each and every day, even when nobody is around us, when we at work, when we out at the store, you know. Standing so stiffly for the name and standing stiffly for his reputation, knowing whose name is upon you. Matter of fact, this is 2 Corinthians. This is 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. Salakia. 2 Corinthians 5. And um, 17. It says, therefore, if any man be in Yahweh Shai, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So you become a whole new creature, man. Your thinking, your mindset, your mannerisms, all should be changed. It says, 
And all things are of the Most High, who hath reconciled us to himself by Yahweh Shai Mashiach, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Right there is a cut. You know, the ministry of reconciliation. That word reconciliation means to make friendly again. When was the Lord ever friendly with these other nations? Not never. So the ministry of reconciliation is only to the Israelites. It says, to wit, the Most High was in Mashiach, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. This is the point, verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Yahweh Shai, as though the Most High did beseech you by us. We pray you in Yahweh Shai's stead that ye be reconciled to the Most High. You see? So we are ambassadors. An ambassador come in the name of the king. So therefore, the names of Yahweh Yahweh Shai has been placed upon us, man. We once again are, are, are calling ourselves Yashar Allah. He is prince of the power, meaning what? He is the son of God. So therefore, we should conduct ourselves accordingly, not just on fucking the day you go out and camp, man. Each and every day, man, showing a desire, showing a, a, a commitment, showing a, 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 that, 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 that appreciation to the Lord each and every day, man. You dealing each and every day, you see? This is how the Lord sups with you. You know, it says, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of the most high in him. You know, so we've called into this great glory, man. Like it says, man, we have received this mercy. Therefore, we faint not. So therefore, we're going to show the Lord how appreciative we are for him calling us into this glory, man. As it is written, let me get this in Peter, man. You know, see, brothers, read these scriptures, man. But, but man, it, the heaviness, man, the the, the 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 impact that these words have. This is um this is um first Peter two and verse nine. It says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, man. Picture that, man. You see, a royal priesthood and holy nation. It's only talking about the elect. Matter of fact, let's start up. This says verse six. I started at five. This is first Peter two and five. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifice acceptable to the most high by Yahweh Shai, man. So guess what? The, the priest didn't just offer sacrifice on the Sabbath or, or on the, no, the priest offers sacrifice each and every day, man. So therefore we, as being the royal priest under the order of Melchizedek, we should offer sacrifices each and every day. It says, wherefore, and it ain't just doing lessons. I ain't saying do a lesson every day. If the spirit on you do a lesson every day, then hey, hey, call Halal Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, you know? But you should make a sacrifice to the Lord each and every day, whether it be you reading, you know, whether it be uh, uh, you watching these videos, whether it be you studying, looking up words, whether it be you looking up a video, whether it be you meeting with a brother, whether it be you calling just to check on a brother, breaking bread with him, so forth and so on, man, you know? This is totality of this thing of ours. It ain't just about making videos and going out in the highways and hedges. No, it's a lifestyle. It says, verse six, wherefore it is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. You see, we got to believe as the, as the word has said, John 7 and 38, he that believeth on me as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, man, you know? This is the this is the spirit of our father that's speaking within us. It says, verse seven, unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. Who is that talking about? Who disallowed? Him? It's talking about the two thirds of our people, man. You see? So this is speaking about the one third and the two thirds. Where the hell the heathen come in at? Nowhere in this motherfucker. They are outside of the temple. You see? It says. Verse eight, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. So two thirds of our people are appointed unto that. So we got to give diligence to make our call and election sure. We don't want to fall into that, man. We want to be the, uh, uh, the ones that have the first dominion as it is written. Let me grab that. Salakia, bear with me real fast. This is um this is Michael 4 and 8. 
It says, <laughs> is Micah 4 and 8. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, the tower of the flock, meaning what? Habakkuk, the second chapter. We're standing on our watch, man. Ezekiel 3 and 17, the Lord has made us watchmen unto the house of Israel. Therefore, give them warning from the Lord. Letting them know what's coming. RFID D chip is the mark of the beast. Don't take that. You see? Esau is coming down with great wrath uh, upon them that, uh, 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 um, matter of fact, let me get it because I don't want to butcher these scriptures. You know, this is 2nd Ezra 16 because this is what's coming. And this is our job as a watchman. The Lord says, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, man. It's 2nd Ezra 16 and 68. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle with things offered unto idols. And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in the reproach and trodden underfoot. You see? So they that consent unto them, you know, going to you going to be destroyed, man. So you ought not to obey them. You ought not to consent unto them. You ought to stand firm in the faith and in the word of Yahweh Basham Yahushai. That's our job. According to Ezekiel, the 13th chapter, the Lord was getting on the false prophets. Why? Because he didn't. All these scriptures come into my head. It's locking. This is um, Ezekiel 13. You know, I don't want to be everywhere. I want to, you know, this is Ezekiel 13. And it's supposed to be just a quick hit. It's 31 minutes in. Ezekiel 13 and, and 4. I started 3. Thus saith the Lord power, woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the desert. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord, man. You see? So it says what? That they didn't, they, they didn't make the hedge. They didn't prepare Israel to stand in the battle. What battle, man? You know, is the, uh, the, uh, um, the hour of temptation that's going to come upon all the world. That's the trying period. You see, we ought to be strengthening our people with these words so they can be able to stand in that day. That's the job of a prophet, man, as it is written. Micah 4 and 8. And thou, O tower of the flock, being those watchmen, right? The stronghold of the daughter of Zion, man. We are that stronghold, man. You see? It says, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion, the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. So if you ain't giving it your all, if you ain't giving your diligence to make your call and election sure, if you half assing and pussyfooting and going through the motions, you're not going to receive that first dominion. That's what we hoping to receive, man. The first dominion, because that first dominion is an everlasting dominion, man. You know, that's what we're hoping for. That's what we're fighting for. That's what the Lord has promised us. So we must believe in that promise, man. Our forefathers did. It's back in 2nd Ezra 16 and 68. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you and feed you, being idle with things offered unto idols. You know, and what and you partaking in those things offered unto idols is you committing idolatry. Ultimately, it's you taking the RFID chip, man. That's ultimately what it goes into. You got guys talking about how the second edge is 15 and chapter 16 go into that. Well, it, 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 we just put it together, man. The spiritual man see these things, man. Because it says they shall take away certain of you. Where are they going to take you to? Concentration camps, man. What they're going to do in those concentration camps. You see, you're going to be told either to take the chip or not to. That's why they got the guillotine set up, man. This is all in prophecy. That's why the scripture says that we have the eye style to see according to Revelation, man. So if you can't see it, A, is because if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. It says, verse 69, and they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden underfoot. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall there be known who are my chosen. It's a lot. Then shall it be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. Hear, O ye my beloved, saith the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. This is our confidence. You see? It says, be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for the Most High is your guide, and the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord, power. Let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. So like it is written, a just man falls seven times, but he picketh up again. That's why we're standing in the grace of Yahweh Shai, man. You know, 
So this is what we ought to be telling our people, confirming our people, strengthening our people. You see, not to take this bullshit from these heathens, man. You know, but um, where was I? Back in back in First Peter two and eight again, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Verse nine. This is the point because two thirds of our people were appointed unto that. This is the point, verse nine. But ye, who is ye? Those lively stones, man. You see, the elect of Israel. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, man. That's heavy right there. You see, that scripture is, is my bad, so lucky. Wait, wait, wait one minute. locking but uh i'm gonna read this again first peter 2 and 9 it says but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people that ye should so forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light man so we've been called out of darkness man we've been called out of that nigga we've been called out of that black culture you see into the what the lord's marvelous light you know so therefore we should walk in it Showing how appreciative we is for the Lord calling us out of that, man. This is Psalms 116. And um verse. I get straight to the point. This is Psalms 116 and 12. What shall I render unto Yahweh by Sham Shai for all his benefits towards me? That's a question. It says he's going to answer it with the next verse. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. You see, because as it is written in the book of Baruch, this is Baruch chapter four and verse twenty-eight. For as it was your mind to go astray from the Most High, so being returned, seek Him ten times more. You know. So this is what we ought to be doing, man. So um. I'm gonna hit a couple of uh, uh, pre precepts off this comment board. You know what I mean? This is um Shalom to all you brothers for tuning in. Uh, this is Brother Shapatya, Ezekiel three and eight. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. You see. So our job is to go, do what, man? To go out there and, and condemn this present evil world, whether they like it or not, as it is written in the book of Acts. This is Acts chapter 20. Verse 20. This is Acts 20 and 26. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of the Most High, man. And that's what our job as prophets are. To declare unto you all the counsel of the Lord. Why? Because we're the stronghold, like it says in that Micah. You know, we're standing on the tower. We're the tower of the flock, man. We are the ones, the watchmen, who's watching over for the sword. Like it says in Ezekiel the third chapter, like it says in Ezekiel the 33rd chapter, man. You know, not just on Saturday, but all throughout the week. When we see an article pop up, boom, you know, see certain things happen within the news, boom. Who else is doing that besides the men of Great Millstone? You see? This is, um... The brother Ariala from Chicago, Issachar Woken. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. In famine he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. That's right, man. You know, that's our power. His arm is not short, uh, shortened where he cannot save. Roughly paraphrasing the scripture. You know, the Lord can save out of uh, 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 miraculous uh, 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 situations, man. Romans 15 and 4, the things that are written aforetime are written for our learning that we through patience and, and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. You see, this is, um, uh, uh, I believe this is Brother Yeshaya or it might be Pops. Anyway, it goes. Shalom to you, brothers. 
This is uh, this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, knowing that Yahweh by Sham Shai is there for us, man. He encampeth around about us. The scripture says when two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst, you know? So Yahweh Shai is there for us. Hey, hey! This is um, Galatians 6 and 16. Uh, 23 and 33, that it goes to two thirds of our people. Ye serpents, ye generations of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Yep, yep, that's A, because that they were appointed unto that, man. You know, this is Galatians 6 and 16. As many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of the Most High, man. That's our job. That's who we're seeking for. You see, Romans 9 and 6. Not as though the word of the Most High had taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. That's right. Uh, Second John 1 and 10. And these are scriptures from the brother Benji, uh, Ratazawaya out of Chicago. If there come, Second John 1 and 10, if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. Meaning what? That there's only one doctrine, there's one way, there's one truth, there's one faith, there's one Lord, as it is written in Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Brother Ariala again, can two walk together except they be agreed, you know? And these, and these is common scriptures. These are these, these are common scriptures, you know? No schisms, one mind, like the brother Benji said. Revelation 16 and 15, behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. What does keeping your garments mean, man? Meaning you, you, you staying occupied in this word. Matter of fact, I get the precept for you. This is um 1 Corinthians. 15 and 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, man. You know, always abounding in the work of the Lord. That's how you keep your garments, man. You know, constantly stay uh, 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 washed within this thing, man. Stay refreshed in his word. You see, this is um, Isaiah 61 and 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my power, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. And that's having that wedding garment on, man. Teaching this word directly and correctly. Lord willing, I got a lesson coming out uh, pretty much. It's called the doctrine from the heavens, man. You know, a certain guys say just because they don't believe in your doctrine, this ain't our doctrine. This is the doctrine of Yahweh. Yahweh Shah got it from his father. Yahweh Shah gave it to his disciples and his disciples in turn gave it to other men. You know, so Lord willing, I, I, I can put that lesson together. Um, this is um, the rest of it. It says, as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with jewels. This is a GMS 11 bread, John 15 and three. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. That's how we stay clean, baby. We got to stay occupied in this word. Matter of fact, that's what it says in Sirach, you know. We got to stay occupied, man, because what it says in uh, Ezekiel, I believe it's the 18th chapter, because if you're not, if you don't stay occupied, you know, if you don't stay continually doing this work, guess what? All your righteousness that you did shall not be remembered, man. You don't want to fall into that category. You know, the world uh, 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 now is made for many, but the world to come is for few. That few is what? The tower of the flock, man, whom we hope to be. This is. um Sirach. Yep, Sirach 11 and 20. Be steadfast in thy covenant and be conversant therein and wax old in thy work. You see, let's read that again. Be steadfast. Didn't that Corinthians say what? Always abound and be steadfast, unmovable. Be steadfast in thy covenant and be conversant therein. That's what uh, uh, our king said, right? This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7 and 13. I learned diligently and do communicate her liberally. I do not hide her riches, for she is a treasure unto men that never faileth, which they that use become the friends of the Most High, being commended for the gifts that come from learning. That's why Sirach in the prologue speaks about what? Being addicted to learning. This is the mindset that we must have, man. Not that niggery ass mindset. Mm. Scripture says be uh, not ignorant of a great matter or a small, man. That's becoming that new man. That's having that new uh, 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 way of thinking, you know? 
This is being an Israelite. This is being Yashar Allah. This is being a son of God, man. You know? Um, this is uh, Ephesians 4 and 22. That ye put off turning the form of conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. This is um, another one uh, from uh, the brother Ariala. It says, his watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot balk, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. And that's what, man? That's two thirds of, of our people. You know, that's the false prophets. You see? This is uh, Joel 2 and 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, it is nigh at hand. Woo, there it is, man. And us blowing that trumpet is what? Isaiah 58 and 1. Sirach 2 and 10, look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? That's facts, man. You know? And the answer is in uh, 1 Maccabees, the second chapter. You know? None that put his trust in him shall be overcome. This is... um. Sirach 2 and 11, for the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering and very pitiful and forgiveth sins and saveth in time of affliction. We got to remember that, have confidence in that. Sirach 39 and 1, but he that giveth his mind to the law of the most high and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. And that's what our job is as 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 watchmen, as prophets, you know. Apostle Har said all the time, Great Millstone is a camp of prophets. So therefore, if you within Great Millstone, you should be occupied in prophecies, man. You know? Because that's the spirit of Yahweh Shai. That's how you stay supping with the Lord. That's how you keep the mindset of Yahweh Shai. That's how you stay washed. That's how you stay refreshed. That's how you keep that wedding garment on. You know? That's how you put on what? That immortal. So Lord willing, I pray and hope this is edifying. I hope it got brothers hot and encouraged for the line. You know, I give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Baruch HaKwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace, blessings, and salutation to all you brothers who are preaching the gospel and truth and in sincerity, always in charity. Remember that the angels encamp around about those that fear the Lord. The Lord is always there with us, man. Give them motherfuckers hell. Shalom.